Hello, and welcome to More Than a Number, Digital Portfolios, a part of the Integrated Technology and Learning Series. Hello, and welcome to Using Digital Portfolios to Document Growth, Demonstrate Knowledge, and More. The thing that I love the most about digital portfolios, or also known as e-portfolios, is we're able to get a whole picture, a whole story of the students that we teach and work with every day beyond simply numbers or letter grades. Digital portfolios get students college and career ready, provide alternate grading, empower student voice and choice, assist students in building a positive digital footprint and understanding why that's important and is a self-reflection piece. So let's start out with what is a digital or e-portfolio. Basically, it's simply a digitized, purposeful, and shareable collection of artifacts and reflections that shows the students' efforts, progress, and achievements in one or more areas of the curriculum and in their life. Well-rounded picture of the student. The purpose of a digital or e-portfolio, well, the overarching purpose of a digital portfolio is to create a sense of personal ownership over one's accomplishments because ownership engenders feelings of pride, responsibility, and dedication. When we build these feelings in our students and allow them to take personal ownership of their own learning, it makes all the difference in the world. So digital portfolios help learners develop a positive digital footprint. We see all the time where there are misuses of social media. We want to make clear to our students why they want to have a positive digital footprint and understand why that matters and how it can affect them in the future. Digital portfolios help learners find their voice and by doing so, they're able to explore their purpose and passions through choice. Students are more than just the courses they take in school. Also, a transcript shows letters and numbers, but a portfolio shows a student's knowledge and achievements, what's behind those letters and numbers. So, for instance, I've worked in many different schools and many different school districts. I've worked in school districts um, that have about 700 students, K through 12. And I've worked in other school districts who just 9 through 12 have 3,000 students. I've worked in schools that have no AP courses at all. And I've worked in schools that are international baccalaureate schools. 4.0 in one of those schools compared to the other is very different. And so colleges and employers are looking for what is behind that grade letter or that grade number. What is it that that 4.0 brings to the table for a college or a career? In fact, Ivy League college schools, Ivy League schools like Stanford, University of Chicago, Amherst, and more have been encouraging students to build digital portfolios of their best work starting in ninth grade. This provides colleges and universities with more and better information about their capabilities and potential. So what that's saying is, yes, our students are living in kind of a catch-22 world. Yes, they need to have those grades, they need to have those SAT scores, but colleges and universities are more and more not looking so much at those numbers, but looking at what is behind those numbers and what the student is actually capable of doing with the education they have. A resume and a cover letter are expected still when applying for jobs and writing essays and so forth to get into colleges. 
but a portfolio actually demonstrates to students' skills, their abilities, their achievements as they relate to the type of position or college study that they are seeking. Digital portfolios actually were brought up by Dr. Helen Barrett back in the 90s. And she separated out digital portfolio plans with K2, 3, 5, 6 through 8, and 9 through 12. So starting out where it's more of a class portfolio, merging in in the three to five grade level to individual portfolios, building even deeper on those once you get to the middle grades, and then in high school, really concentrating on those college and career portfolios. How are those portfolio is going to follow them once they leave school and go into the college and career atmosphere. Quick reminder, reflection and relationship are the heart and soul of a digital portfolio. It's not about the technology. It's showing that reflection piece and the relationship piece. So let's talk about some digital portfolio tools. There's Seesaw that's used a lot for the tinies. We have Google Sites, Wix is another one, Weebly is another one that I've used as well. And I think um, Squarespace is in there. There's lots of different portfolio building tools. Whatever you want to use, that's up to you and your school. I prefer Google Sites and in this course, we will be using Google Sites. So wait, before you get started, on building your digital portfolio. Can't just jump in and start building a website. There needs to be some planning. So step one is to brainstorm. Just make a list of all the different things that you might think need to be into a digital portfolio. Do some research like we'll be doing in this course to see what are recommendations of what needs to be in a good digital portfolio. So in step one, brainstorming, think about that audience. And you might have to change your digital portfolio or make um, a duplicate one where you alter that information depending on the audience that you are presenting that digital portfolio for. Is this a digital portfolio for college admission or is it for a potential employer? What's the purpose? What's the purpose or reason for creating this digital portfolio? It does not ever need to be a grade. That defeats the whole purpose if you're saying, take, make a digital portfolio and assign a grade to it. Goals. What do you hope to accomplish or achieve when you build this portfolio? Make sure to list your interests, hobbies, activities, other things you enjoy doing, because again, a digital portfolio shows the whole person not just one aspect of a person. What is your self-expression? How do you really express yourself the best? Is it in pictures, films, writing, painting, singing, music, etc.? Let that self-expression, that personality that's unique to you show through. Show what you're passionate about. Know what your strengths are. And also know what your weaknesses and challenges are and discuss how you will overcome those obstacles or what you're actually doing to improve on those. So step two, organizing your ideas. Now that you have all that information floating around in your brain and jotted down on paper or on a Google Doc or wherever you jot down your ideas, now let's organize those into categories. Now, once we have all of our ideas down, we have them moved into our, to our categories, let's talk about the home page. This is the first page people who look at your digital portfolio will see. So back a long time ago when I was in school, we were taught that you need to be really uh, conscious of your dress when you go in for an interview, how you look and how you have yourself put together because first impressions stay with people. Well, now for our students, their first impression that they're making is this homepage, is their digital portfolio. This is their face now to college boards, to future employers. This is what they'll see and the impression that others will see of them. 
So make sure that your messaging and your purpose is clear on your home page. I encourage having an about me page. This is where you'll have a bio about yourself, photos. Make sure those are professional photos. We don't need photos of you on the beach or at the bar. Um, professional looking photos. It should also include maybe your interest. I know some people who have a top 10 infographic that they've made of themselves and that looks really cool. Make sure you list your accomplishments, any honors, awards, or certificates, and try to make your top 10 list relate to your interest, future career, and goals. Also, include a career plan. Plans, goals, dreams, what's your inspiration for pursuing those dreams or that career? What's your career plan? And a resume. Make sure your resume matches that audience. Again, I've had to change my resume several times depending on what type of job I've been applying for so that I can customize that resume to match what the job is expecting. Then make sure you reflect. The big thing about digital portfolios is they require lots and lots and lots of reflection. Know your elevator speech, know that reflection. Step three, this is where we jump in and actually start building the content in Google Sites, Wix, um, Seesaw, Squarespace, Weebly, any of those other uh, Google uh, website building tools that you have at your disposal. So you're gonna create your website. Again, there are several different websites you can choose from. We'll be using Google Sites for this course. And then step four, reflect on what you've done. Once you have it the way you want it to look, publish it, share it, but then make sure to go back and reflect over and over again. Because as you grow and you develop more skills, you're going to go back and look at that original portfolio and go, oh gosh, that was terrible. <laughs> I, I can make that look much better or I've done much better work now that I want reflected or I've received some honors or awards that I want reflected. And you're going to constantly be changing that because as you live, breathe and grow, your digital portfolio needs to live, breathe and grow with you. It should be a reflection of you in the current status, which means that's going to change over time. You can use digital portfolios as a form of assessment. So we talked about alternate grading. I'm going to show you quickly um, a digital portfolio example that can be used for alternate grading. Okay, so here we can see that this is an anatomy and physiology portfolio. The student has introduced themselves. And then we also see the different standards that the student will learn during this class. And so if we just go underneath standard one, and let's see if I pick out the skeletal system, we can see here the student has had to define what the goal of this particular standard is. They have a link to a post about um, their, uh, their project about broken bones. They have to write a paragraph describing or explaining their project. They need to also put what their score was on the quiz. And then they need to write a reflection piece on the quiz itself. So if I click here to look at the project, I can click and open up that bone fracture. And here we can see the research that the student has done into bone fractures. And we can see the thorough job that the student has done in this research. So that's just one very quick example of how you can use digital portfolios for an alternate grading. For the littles, um, you can use something like Seesaw. This is where students can upload their work and what they're most proud of. And then parents have a special code or password to be able to get in and just see 
um, their child's work only. It's a great way for students to reflect on their own learning and what they're most proud of and would like to share with others. Here's a portfolio that I love to show when I'm teaching about digital portfolios. Remember we talked about first impressions and the landing page is the first thing someone will see and know about you. So if we look at Sean Neal's landing page, we can see right away that this is his career portfolio. But do you notice anything else about this page? What I direct attention to is the fact, and most students say, Sean must like music or do something with music. And that's because that's the image that's prominent on Sean's page. Images, pictures speak a thousand words. So we talk about this is also a place where when we're talking about pictures, we can say, what does that reflect about you? And also, we talk about um, sizing of pictures. Do we want it to look pixelated or do we want it to look really crisp and professional? Um, we talk about those things because what you pick out and the way it looks does reflect back on you. So Sean Mills, I'm going to click and get into his actual portfolio. And we can see down here, Sean has written kind of an introduction of himself. And we see a, a cute little picture of him there. If we go back up, he has an introduction tab. This is where Sean has actually written a personal mission statement and has it to where it's downloadable and also a resume. Professional, another tab. These are recommendation letters from his teachers. Y'all, I have worked in high schools for the majority of my career, and you cannot believe the panic that those juniors and seniors have when they're applying to colleges and they need reference letters. And they'll be like, I can't find it, Ms. Robertson. I know my teacher emailed it to me, but now I'm looking through my email and I can't find it there. They wouldn't have that panic if they store all of those letters of recommendation right there inside of their digital portfolio. Those students that I started working with when I was in a district that mandated digital portfolios were so much more organized and relaxed and not as panicked and stressed as other students were previous to having digital portfolios. Sean also shows off his academic awards. He also provides work samples because here's the thing. If Sean is saying his specialty is music, he needs to show evidence of what he can do with music. What can he bring to the table for a college, university, or a career? You have to bring that evidence in. And then Sean also has a blog where he can express his voice. Other portfolios, we can look at Jared's. We can see that he's really excited about films. So he has different films that he's been involved with creating. He has those examples here. He loves photos and art, so he's included some of that work that he's done. He also includes his written work, his accomplishments, and then about me page, and then final words. Zachary has done something similar. Notice that their pages look very different from each other, those landing page, their home page. Again, this is a place where students get to show their individuality and stand out as this is me and putting that best foot forward. Colleges and universities are now requiring students to have digital or e-portfolios because they know how important that is when they're seeking out to go into the career force, into the workforce. It also puts students above the rest of the competition because getting into colleges, getting that great job is very competitive. 
while other students may do a dry resume, black and white resume, or do a dry regular old essay. If you couple those with and also here, take a look at my digital portfolio. It really makes you stand above the crowd. It gets you noticed. It keeps you on the mind of those people who are making decisions as to whether you'll be um, getting into that college or university, whether you'll be getting that scholarship, whether you'll be getting that job above somebody else. So now let's continue on learning more about digital portfolios.